Okay, we're back at the kitchen counter, kitchen counter culture. Tonight we're going to be featuring a tasting on Japanese whiskeys. And one, the Yamazaki uh, 12 year old single malt, and the uh, Hakushu uh, single malt uh, 12 year old as well. We're going to be um, opening these up, we're going to be pouring them, we're going to be tasting them. Um, we've got some other Japanese whiskeys here as well. Uh, we won't be tasting these tonight, but we'll uh, certainly be doing future videos and based on comments and likes. Uh, we certainly can uh, move over and expand uh, what, we're, uh, what we're tasting to do uh, further compares and contrasts. We're also going to be rating uh, the whiskeys tonight as well uh, on a scale of 0 to 100. So do stick around towards the end of the video and, uh, and hear our ratings and, and our thoughts and comments about what we think about these whiskeys. And we'd love to hear what your thoughts are in the comments uh, once you've had a chance to try the whiskeys and, and uh, view the video. So with that said, uh, where do we go from here? Well, let's do it. Let's open them up and uh, take a look. And Okay, so the Yamazaki is the, I guess, oldest uh, distillery in Japan. Right? Yes. And uh, it's been a while since I've had this. Um, you know, the age statement Japanese whiskeys are just becoming harder and harder to find, especially at retail. And uh, so, I don't know if there's a, uh, here we go. Tab there to, to take off the foil. Yeah, it seems to be a trend in the last couple of years. I mean, the demand for whiskeys globally is just massive and has increased massively. And I think when we look at age statement whiskeys, uh, be it uh, uh, Japanese whiskeys or Scotch whiskeys, um, it, it seems like more and more brands are introducing uh, non-age statement whiskeys into their portfolios due to the fact that uh, the demand is so high and the supply is so low. And as we all know, uh, you can't start a whiskey company and, and really start to make, uh, uh, you know, produce a 12-year-old uh, uh, whiskey uh, out of the gate. You know, you have to, this has to sit in the barrel and it has to age. And uh, for that reason, the demand is high and the supply is low. So let's take a look at that box. And uh, there's a, actually a great description. We'll put some photos uh, uh, as well on the site. It gives a little bit on the tasting notes. Here it says color, um, pure gold. And I think we look at this and you know, even under the lights, I think the pure gold definitely comes through. Um, from the nose, it says peach, pineapple, grapefruit, clove, candied orange, vanilla, and what's the last ingredient? I can't quite read that. The, the oak here, I think, right in the nose. Those oh, just Japanese oak. Japanese yeah. oak, right. And then uh, on the palate, it says uh, it's got uh, coconut, cranberry, and butter. Sounds like a great combination. And for a finish, sweet ginger, cinnamon, long finish. So with all that said, it sounds delicious. It sounds like a a gourmet meal that somebody would be uh, cooking and, and enjoying. Uh, all that in a, uh, a dram of whiskey. I'm, I'm excited to, to try this one out. Any other comments about the, the Yamazaki 12? This is the first time I've tried it. I know you've had it before. Yeah, so the um, it, it's aged, I believe, in three different types of casks. Uh, Ex-American um, bourbon oak barrels. Um, Ex Spanish sherry and as well as Japanese uh, Mizunara mm -hmm. casks. So, um, yeah, let's try it. Okay, cheers. That's nice. It's delicious. It's really, really nice. Wow. Now, this is a lot different, and we can, we can um, flip it around also as well. Um, as far as, as the nose, you know, it says peach, pineapple, grapefruit, and clove. When I read these, of course, I start thinking about those things, but I definitely get, I definitely get the peach and the pineapple. I think those are definitely some top notes that I get. Um, I definitely, you know, really get the um, the oakiness of this as well. I, you know, a lot of uh, Japanese whiskeys I taste, some some of them tend to be much, you know, sort of cleaner and more refreshing and less uh, peaty and and uh, 
you know, smoky compared to sort of their, their Scotch counterparts. But this definitely has much more of a punch than a traditional Japanese whiskey that I've had in the past myself. Yeah, I see what you mean. Um, this is, though, a non-peated whiskey. Mm -hmm. And the uh, I, I can definitely smell the the, the ex-bourbon coming through some of the vanilla. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's definitely vanilla in the nose. Very caramelly. And, and the color, some of that's gotta be from the sherry oak, the Spanish sherry oak barrels. Yep. And I really get that, I get that, that butter. I don't get as much coconut and cranberry as they describe on the palate, but I definitely get a, a good amount of the, um, the butter, you know, to your point, it's, it's got that very rich taste to it. It's delicious. Um, you, you're right, there's, while it's unpeated, you definitely don't get that peat, but you, you definitely, it, it, it's a, it's a very tasty whiskey. It's a very mature whiskey. To me, it's got a lot of flavor, and you can, to your point, you can really taste the wood on this. And as you should, you know, being in the barrel for, for 12 years, I would expect there to, you know, have a lot of wood coming through. Yeah, really nice finish. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, fantastic finish on that. Uh, this is just a great whiskey to enjoy neat. Um, I'm sure with a few drops of water, maybe an ice cube, it probably changes the dimension of the whiskey a little bit. Uh, we can certainly try that to see if that, uh, you know, brings out any additional flavor. I can certainly get a little bit of water for that. Um, I tend not to drink my whiskeys on ice. I know a lot of people enjoy it sort of on the rocks or with one ice cube. Um, I just don't get a lot of heat off of this. So as far as um, uh, ABV, what are, what are we what are we talking? Forty three percent, forty three or something. Yeah. Yep. So eighty six proof, and I think that again, that's that's pretty traditional for Japanese whiskeys. They tend to be lower proof, based on my experience. Um, whereas some of the the Scotch whiskeys tend to be in the nineties, and of course, if you're getting you know barrel strength whiskeys, you're uh, certainly up above a hundred. Um, the nice thing about this whiskey is it doesn't it doesn't really hit you in the face with a heavy alcohol hit right up front. I mean, I feel it more in the finish than I do in uh, the approach. Yeah, not not at all. And um, so the third type of oak uh, barrel that's in this whiskey is um, is the Japanese uh, Mizunara. And uh, you know, it's from what I know about it, it's it's a very dense oak uh, tree or wood, mm -hmm. and um, so it it you need to really soak in, in, and age in the barrel for quite a while before the flavor of that wood, you know, will start to impart onto the, the uh, uh, you know, the, the alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the, the, the flavor is a, is a more focused, clean, uh, singular flavor. Um, I'm curious why they use it here because it seems like it would just kind of be you know, hidden. I, 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 I'm not gonna lie. I, I don't know if I can tell that they're, you know, tease out that specific wood, the, the, the wood that's right. You know, bringing forth a flavor. You know, but I think that's one of the things that makes it uniquely Japanese. Because I, I think obviously in Scotland they're using ex bourbon barrels, they're using sherry casks, they're using a number of different types of wood to age their whiskeys in Scotland. Um, to my knowledge, and correct me if I'm wrong, how many? Um, producers in Scotland are using this this specific wood that you're talking about here probably very few if any correct uh, probably yeah none right you know. so this gives it a unique sort of Japanese sort of aspect or element which I think even though it may not be sort of um, the first thing that you, that sort of grabs you from a, from a flavor perspective it's something that makes it uniquely Japanese. And to me, I think that's that's really cool. I think that's interesting. And I think the fact that they um, bring this wood in and they age the, the, the whiskey in these barrels, despite it being a hard wood and probably not imparting as much flavor as some of the other barrels that they use to age the whiskey, um, it's putting something special into the bottle. And I think that's something that makes it uniquely Japanese. Yeah, I mean, there's another brand, the uh, Kayo Mizunara Oak. And I think um, that's probably 
aged exclusively in the you know Mizunara oak. Um, so you know one one day we could try that. Try Certainly. that. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, very cool, excellent stuff. Let's let's push this a little bit uh, back, and we'll cap that up, and we'll move on to our next uh, example, and that is. Okay, perfect. I can see it. Yep. Let's go down a little bit. All right. Let's open that one up and and, uh, and see the difference. Okay, so I'm excited to try this. It's um, it's been a long time, a few years. The retail sticker is still on that. And this, we'll just do a quick uh, recap on the, on the back of the box. So, tasty notes here, uh, color, uh, champagne gold. So, I, I expect this to be a little bit lighter in um, its appearance and color. Nose, it says a basil, pine needle, and green apple. Thank you. And then on the palate, sweet pear, mint, and kiwi. Three things I like very much. Sounds like um, sort of what I might have for breakfast in the morning with some yogurt. And then finish, green tea, subtle smoke. Okay, so let's take a peek at this color-wise. And I look at this, definitely different. And let's see, let's just back it up a little bit and we can see if we can do a sort of a comparison. Might be hard to we might have to hold these up just to see. But you can definitely see a color difference. So I would just push these back just a little bit more right there. And you know, you can definitely tell the Yamazaki is definitely uh, a darker color, a richer color, a more golden color. Here, again, the description is more champagne gold. And you can definitely see that, I think, in this. Uh, it may not necessarily be coming through you know, in the video, but side by side, you can you can clearly see that there's a difference between, you know, uh, the Hakushu here and the Yamazaki here. Um, definitely a different color profile. So I'm gonna give this a, a quick nose. So again, on the box, basil, pine needle, green apple. Oh yeah, right away you smell the peat. Yeah. Right, so yeah. this is a peated, uh, whiskey, um, very lighty peated low, yep. right? It's at uh, seven to nine parts per million. Okay. That, that's what I read. So not an art bag. For sure not. <laughs> right. I definitely got the green apple. Um, yeah, very yeah. floral. I mean, um, herbal, right? Yep. Yeah, a great nose. I I, yeah. I have to say I'm I'm liking this more than the um, the Yamazaki. The Hakushu the nose, is yeah. yeah on the nose. Wow, that's um, that's spectacular actually. Oh wow, yeah, I mean a completely different flavor profile there. You taste all the fruit that's uh, described on the box. You know I don't get the kiwi, <laughs> but. I definitely can feel the mint a little bit, and maybe that's some of the alcohol that comes through. You know, obviously when you've got the, and I think from again, from a 43%, so this is 86 uh, proof, which is, um, you know, um, the same as uh, the Yamazaki uh, from, a, from an ABV perspective. 46 or 40. Two, 43, 43. 43. Yeah, so, so 80, 86 there. proof. Yep, yep, yep. 86 proof. So same, same alcohol, ABV, as the Yamazaki. Um, but I feel like I get a little more heat with this one. I don't know why. It's just, I get it on the nose. It, it hits me a little bit more um, in, in the face from an alcohol perspective. But it's smooth, and it's it's good. But you definitely get a little bit more smoke. You definitely feel the peat. So, yeah, it's, it's also aged in three different types of... Uh, you know, wood, uh, American um, oak, um, and a uh, Spanish uh, sherry. And then um, the pita portion is aged again in uh, American oak. Yep. So, um, yeah, and, and just lightly peated, really just, um, um, I'm loving this. Yeah, it's delicious. I think for me, I, I like the Yamazaki better. Um, let's get to voting, let's get to ratings. Um, we want to finish the video up, so it's, um, I think, two excellent, excellent bottles. Um, 
you want me to go first or you want to go first? In, in my mind, um, you know, for 12 year old whiskey, I, it's, it's complex enough. Um, you know, it's, it's very approachable. Um, I mean, if you can find it, I think the price point is, I mean, at about a hundred dollars a bottle, although yeah. I know it's, that's hard to find. Um, these are just excellent, excellent, um, whiskeys. I would give, uh, the Hakushu a 92, and I'm gonna give the Yamazaki 12 at uh, 90. They're excellent in my book, and um, I like them both, and I just like the Hakushu a little bit more. Okay, excellent. So for me, um, I'm a little bit on the other side of this, so I prefer the, the, the Yamazaki. I think for me, I would give this, um, I mean, this is really good. I mean, really, really good. I love this uh, and I, I like it a lot. I, I'm gonna give this, um, you know, 93 out of 100. Um, the Hakushu or Hakushu, I think I'm, I like it, it's delicious. Um, to me, it just didn't, it didn't jump out at me as much. I'm gonna give this, to me, I'm gonna give this an 89. Very good. All right. So that, there you have it. Uh, we feature two uh, uh, Japanese whiskeys from the Suntory Whiskey Company, the oldest uh, distillery, uh, whiskey distillery in Japan. And uh, as we said, sort of at the opening, you know, we love Japanese whiskey. Uh, tonight we, you know, had the privilege of opening and tasting these two very, very delicious Japanese whiskeys. And uh, tell us what you think. Uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts as to these two whiskeys specifically, or any other Japanese whiskeys for that matter. And if there are other whiskeys you'd like us to perhaps taste or pair, compare or contrast or rate in the future, you know, again, please let us know in the comments and we'll do our best to uh, source the whiskeys and, and try them out. Very good. All right. Cheers. Cheers, buddy. Okay. <laughs>